I'm Judy Strayer. And <laughs> I'm Judy Strayer and as chair of the local historic district commission, I'm calling this meeting to order at 3.08 p.m. on Monday, July 11th, the 11th, I think, Yeah. 22. Um, and minutes, excuse me, minutes are being taken and the meeting is being recorded as usual. Um, we, we're not having a public hearing, so we don't need to read that statement, correct? Exactly, yeah. Okay, uh, should we do roll call? Um, Bruce Coldham? Yes, I'm here, and can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes. Uh, Greta Wilcox? Here. And Karen Winter? Here. And I'm Judy Strayer, and I am here also. So, I believe that's what awesome. we um, Great. Yeah, so since we didn't, there weren't any applications, Ben said, so I didn't know if you guys would want to meet or not, but I thought at least in terms of discussing the subcommittee stuff, it would be good. Um, yes, and, and I think Karen and I have our first uh, planning board meeting, I think the night after next. Is that correct, Karen? Um, um, I, they're not expecting me. I'm leaving for Germany, so they know that. Oh, okay. And I'm not coming back until August 7th, unless something dire happens and I have to come back earlier, which may. So, uh, but the reason for that is that both of us are, are beginning a, a commitment that is going to strain our capabilities to continue here. I know I uh, uh, said I'll stick around until we find somebody, but I'm going to be interested in. Uh, uh, the effort to find a replacement mm -hmm. uh, because I can see that this planning board is going to take some time uh, of, uh, you know, getting 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 sorted through things. So um, uh, well, I'll ask I, that every time we meet, I think. Understandable. Um, I don't know about you, Ben, but it was my impression that you and Karen both wanted to fully stay on the commission. So no, I said, well, I, I'm, my term is- Oh, you did as, yeah, and as an architect, I think you yeah. wanted. And I said that I would stay until I was replaced, but but I I am looking to advance the, uh, I okay. think my, I think I've got another year to run. Yeah. But I, I wasn't looking to run that whole year out, uh, particularly, um, okay. uh, because we're looking to find someone to replace me. So I would say let's start now rather than later. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, no, I will say I've done staying on this topic for a second. I, I've uh, I was in talk, contact with you, Bruce, and and your colleague Steve Schreiber, and the woman from Western Mass AIA, and you guys gave me a few names. Uh, unfortunately, none of those folks uh, felt they had the com time commitment to offer um, for this position. Um, and then I did have uh, the director of Western Mass AIA post do like a blast email blast uh, to all of the members, and I, that was a few weeks ago, and I still haven't heard anything back yet. Yeah. So um, definitely trying, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I, I feel like uh, personal recruitment always always helps. So. If you wanna, if you wanna start uh, bother, bothering any of your architect colleagues about it directly, um, we okay. can, yeah. But otherwise, yeah. I'll, I'll keep, I'll keep asking around uh, and and doing outreach as, yeah, as needed. Is it Ben? Is it? Yeah, I'm assuming it's because a lot of architects who practice in Amherst don't live in Amherst. I know. Yeah. So it has to be somebody who they lives. Have to they have to live in Amherst. They have yeah. To live in Amherst. Yeah. And if yeah. they, yeah, and if they're practicing, they're probably going to be feel constrained because. Uh, right. Yeah. Well, I'm I, also think I'm thinking of architects though who like work at the colleges and universities. Oh, yeah. Like where my I used to work. A, yeah, that would but, be better. My um, neighbor is an architect that would be great. We actually um, ruled on her mini splits. Um, but she's on sabbatical for a year, so. Oh. Uh, she's so also Pari, Pari. 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 She's Pari. done it. 
she's oh, she's not, not interested. Okay. She's not interested anymore. Uh, okay. Okay. Now that we've done, now that we work for her. <laughs> oh dear. Um, okay. Yeah. No, and I'm thinking where I worked in at Amherst College. Architects who are licensed don't live in Amherst. Right. That yeah. I can think of. Um, uh, what if, uh, Tom Hayden, does he? Uh, Aaron Hayden? Aaron. Aaron. Uh, no, Tom. Tom, Tom Davies. Davies. Tom Davies, yes. Uh, I do not believe he's licensed in Massachusetts as an AIA. Huh. I believe he's licensed in Vermont, but not Massachusetts. But I could be. But this has, uh, so our, you see, this was my point earlier. I, I see, I, I, in the whole of the time that I've been on this uh, commission, I haven't been yeah. licensed so because the, uh, I the let actual, my license go. The actual language is uh, the commission, blah, 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 blah. One member from two nominees solicited from the chapter of the American Institute of Architects covering Amherst. So it doesn't necessarily say the architect that's, needs to have an active license. It's just. Yes, that's what I thought. And that's yeah. why I, I would say Tom is quite. Uh, yeah. Quite available from that point of view. Yeah. Um, I know Tom. I mean, I could I could ask him. I don't know yes. if, he lives, if he lives in Amherst, though. He, he does live in it. He lives in he South. Does. OK, yeah. gotcha. Yeah, um, he, he was. He's, he's he's really really busy. I mean. Oh, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah I, I've yeah. worked with him on permitting a few projects. Um, yeah. yeah. So, um, <laughs> and you mentioned you mentioned Aaron. Aaron is Aaron's an engineer. Aaron Hayden. Yes. Um, no, I, I was getting the two mixed up. I always do. Yeah. yeah. But I'll I'll think if there's anybody else that I can think of from my world that. Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Um. <laughs> Yeah. Um, all right, and I think Peggy just joined us. Um, Looks like it, yeah. Yeah, so that's good. Okay, there, am I unmuted now? You are, okay. yeah, we can hear okay. you. My apologies for, Yeah. we just got back from a few weeks away and I'm just catching myself up, sorry. <laughs> no problem. Okay. And I have just a little question for the group about the underground wires. If you want me to go ahead and research whether there are grants available and things. I know I brought it up before and it seemed people were interested, but I just wanted to get the official okay. And then I'll do some research and see what's up there. I would say, why not? Okay, yeah. we'll do. Um, I was, one thing I would, I mean, this is, and this may be totally different from what would happen in, in Amherst, but I know where um, my dad lives outside of Boston. They did a big underground project about, it was two, it was two years ago, because um, I was staying at their house, my mom, anyway, I was staying at their house for a while, and it was really intense. Oh, I really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you find so, out if they funded it or anything. Um, yeah. Oh, that's, that's actually, yeah. The DP, actually the DPW is right, is right around the corner from where it was. But um, yeah, they buried, they buried a lot of, they buried a lot of wow. stuff. And um, yeah, so. Well, find out how they funded it and. <laughs> yeah, I'm well, not who sure. Who to call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know I San Francisco's could, working to underground wire, so. And I'm not sure if it would have been the town or the. Probably be the utility utilities, company. yeah. Yeah. Yes, the utilities are going to do that sort of thing. And yeah. I think since UMass is doing a major building project, almost in the local historical district, maybe they can um, be involved a little bit when they do the new construction, having underground wiring. Anyway. Yeah. I'll look into it. I know there are grants available and there are new ways of boring underground that are easier, but yeah. I don't know much else about it. Yeah, Except no, I think it's interesting. It's nice. Where where we where I live on East Pleasant Street, we we always have issues with wires because some yeah. of our some of our wires are too low. So like we had a delivery trunk once get stuck oh, no. and pull down a wire 
um, just a regular size truck. But anyway, we've been told the same as you that we are kind of the, a conduit for a lot of UMass. So stuff. maybe they can help, right? Because you know. we've had tree branches knock down the wires. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah. good. I will keep so. investigating. And if you check out your dad's town next time. I can see, yeah, I can, I can, um, yeah, I can give them a call and see who. Okay. Why not? <laughs> so see if I can find anything out, but. Um, so did Peggy, I mean, Karen, did you want to talk about the, I guess the subcommittee or is it just, we all need to get our stuff to you? Um, I can talk a little bit about it since this is probably our, our only chance with open meeting law. Um, we're trying to write, we're trying to sort of finalize uh, the project as far as we have it, the division of those houses along uh, North Pleasant Street. And so I, for, I did forward to you, Ben, a little introduction of what we were doing and then uh, the five houses that I have in, in very short form added them. And I think that Greta and Susan are going to add theirs. Jim, I asked him and he's just gonna give the folders to us. And so we can do the same thing. And then we have that, that you can look at Ben uh, and we'll have to discuss, are we gonna go any further or who do we sub, I mean, I thank you for this sending the link to the preservation um, plan. Yeah. Plan. I don't know how this, how we could somehow fit this in as part of that. Is is this study supposed to? I know that the preservation plan said it was. I think passed in two thousand and five, uh, and it said we're going to keep updating this, and every ten years it should be reviewed. So that would be. 2025, but maybe we can somehow attach this as an ongoing study to see if we can, the, the purpose I think of this was not just to help facilitate more research, but to also see, is it worth trying to expand our uh, Sunset Lincoln historic uh, district to have the borders encompass more of the houses that clearly are part of the historic district in terms of the age of the houses and the styles of houses. So, um, yeah, that's right now. Yeah. Yeah, so the preservation plan is a separate uh, effort. I think it, it was first done in 2005, and then we're currently working with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission to update the preservation plan. And that the preservation plan is kind of a guiding document for both the historical commission, the local historic district commission, town government, town staff, um, to try to set priorities and goals for historic preservation, like town-wide town really. So like one of the goals and strategies could be, um, you know, proposing to expand the Lincoln Sunset District, but the preservation plan is, is a much bigger effort than um, I would say the, the effort to it, it it encompasses the the um the study about Lincoln Sunset um but uh I I I only sent you the plan Karin just because it, it's on the agenda for today is to you know continue to discuss you know general priorities for the next iteration of the preservation plan um and I don't know if it I don't know if the study would be an addendum to the preservation plan I think it, it, it they would be a separate uh, kind of efforts altogether. Um, <coughs> but um, I think they're, they're obviously related, so. Would, would it make sense before, like we go too far to actually talk to somebody um, in the state to find out like the feasibility, like I guess you were talking about seeing like like if we should go forward or what we should do, you know, cause I was just like looking at what they did, um, the group did for the original Lincoln sunset, you know, mm -hmm. it was, I mean, it was a huge submission and I'm yeah. just thinking. Yeah, and they worked with a consultant for that. 
Okay. Um, I didn't know that. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, I, I think to, uh, I, I'm, I guess I'm imagining that the study committee can kind of lay the groundwork for, uh, so I, I guess skipping ahead a little bit, if you guys wanted to work with a consultant, obviously you need to find funding to hire that consultant. And I think the best um, funding source for that is the Community Preservation Act funding, C, uh, CPA funding. Um, I think this would qualify. Um, and so there would be a application for CPA funding, um, I think in September, so relatively soon. Um, and I think you could use the work you've done so far as like a justification for, um, you know, seeking out funding to hire a consultant is the way I, you know, I would kind of think about it. So, um, if that's, if that's what you guys wanted to do, I think that would be a good path forward. And then it's the, it's the CPA, there's a CPA commission that would, uh, listen intake your application and vote on you know whether to recommend it or not and i don't know i would i would i think i could work on getting some cost estimates for that work i imagine it would be maybe ten fifteen thousand dollars somewhere around there um it's not a huge amount of buildings so so ben the the purpose of it is really to get more uh, justifications, better research, more justifications to, um, to to make a case for expanding our district. Is that the goal? And is that why we're studying this? Um, yeah, I think that was the original impetus was to expand the Lincoln Sunset District to encompass those ho homes along Kendrick Park then if that is the goal, then it seems to me pretty clear that we should, if we're gonna pursue it, then we're gonna to have to see if we can get funding for a professional consultant to do that. And then if that gets declined, then we have a pretty, we have an answer of how difficult it's gonna be. Is that mm -hmm. right? Or is, how do you see that? Um, yeah, yeah, go ahead, Judy, if you're going to talk. Um, I was just going to make a comment that when I first met with Jennifer about this, um, her husband, you know, came in and since he had worked on the original Lincoln Sunset District a lot, his thought was kind of, I remember him basically saying it was going to be an uphill battle to do this. So we add that area. Yes. Yeah. Because of the commercial interest. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's and that's why I guess they took it out. You know, they sacrificed that to get the several hundred that were in the but yeah. Which doesn't mean that they shouldn't have been included, but right. right. Um, but I just feel like we need to go into this knowing it's not you know that there's going to be there there may be challenges to it um but i don't know a lot about hiring a consultant yeah yeah i mean in the grand scheme of things uh cpa applications you know there's usually around 1.5 to 2 million dollars total given out so a, a 10 or 15 thousand dollar ask for a consultant yeah um, I don't think would be that heavily scrutinized, um, especially because you're not actually proposing the, to, to, they're not voting on actually expanding the district at that point. They're just voting on allocating. Studying. Uh, the, the, the study funds to study the idea of it. So, um, you know, there might be some town council members who look very closely at it and raise some questions and concerns, but I, I would expect it to be pretty straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. 
No, and I also think of since since the whole, you know, they've kind of done the playground at Kendrick Park and stuff, there's even more of a like impetus to mm -hmm. yeah, good point. To say it's a relevant, you know, stretch of of properties. So yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, I will say just to be transparent to the uh the CPA funding is a it's a very um long application uh period. So you you apply in September ish September October, it's reviewed by like seven no not seven probably five different committees, mm -hmm. uh, and then it's not actually the money the funds don't actually become available until July first, so it, it would basically be a year from now that uh, with the new fiscal year a, a year from now that the we could bring on a consultant. Um, so it's a it's a, it's kind of frustrating because you have to plan so far in advance for these projects, um, but uh, that's just the way the the town's accounting department run runs the grant. So um, as long as that's okay with everyone, I know it it's it'll it'll kind of be a long time to wait. But but it does mean that the uh, any application uh, is typically nowadays. Uh, October 1st is the deadline. It used to be December 1st of two years or more ago. Um, so uh, we should be thinking about that through September. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, I don't think the applications, uh, they're typically not available until mid-September. So we have to wait because the, the CPAC has to meet first and finalize the application which is usually the same as the previous year but you know sometimes it's got a slight change mm -hmm. i I've, uh, I've made uh, I, in the past 10 years probably approached the the uh, the cpac i don't know five or six times yeah mostly in relation to the in, uh, north Amherst community farm uh, but i've i've done it a lot and for Grant amounts from ten thousand to one hundred and ten thousand, uh, and everything that Ben said is correct in my experience. It's, uh, but it's it's just a matter of appreciating that that's the process, and and then being ready for the various moments when you need to uh, show up and make a case. And often the cases that I have made have had to be made very strenuously, so I've uh, mm -hmm. developed a a fairly aggressive attitude towards the CPAC. <laughs> but I, I, he's right. I don't think this one would necessarily be a, uh, a contentious because it's pretty standard. Yeah. A pretty standard use of CPAC funds is what I meant by that. That sounds good. Um... Is there anything, I guess, is there anything else that we wanted to like start reviewing as a group or as a commission? I know in addition to the underground wires. Um, um, I think uh, last time we were talking with Shannon Walsh from the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, she had talked about uh, one one potential goal or aspiration for this commission could be the development of um, design guidelines or, or design standards for the local mm -hmm. historic district. Um, and so I don't have anything right now, but maybe in the future we could uh, look at a few examples from other cities and towns of and, and get a sense of just how they're how these guidelines are structured and what um good idea you know what inspiration yeah. they're taking what yeah ben, what inspiration they're taking the de de designs from yeah ben would you have time to pull together uh, two or three uh sample uh, uh, uh examples of what towns with local historic district commissions have done in this regard towns that say that bears some similarity to ours. 
which is to say yeah for design guidelines yeah 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 i could definitely pull that together that, i mean it's it should either either you or one of us uh or more than one of us but someone mm -hmm. should bring to the table an example of what other commit other towns have done and uh and then we we could look at those and perhaps develop some questions collectively about uh and then we could go ahead and answer those, which probably would involve, I mean, I'm gather, I'm guessing this sort of questions would be type of questions that would be initially answered anyway by calling uh, people like you in the various, people like you, Ben, in the various towns right, and asking right. them uh, how, you know, how long did this take? What sort of reception does this have? Um, how many times has it been challenged? Has it been, you know, in court or those kind of things? Because we don't want to create a, a set of documents that are going to uh, gratuitously uh, provoke uh, legal engagement on the one hand, and neither do we want to do something that is so bland and mild as to be uh, uh, you know, marginally only marginally, if that useful. So we need to mm -hmm. we need to know how hard to push, and and uh, and and that sort of thing, and know that if we push beyond certain points, these will be the the, the possible or likely consequences. I think right. uh, the town would like to know that. They want to know whether we're creating something that's going to cost money to defend, you know, that sort of thing. It's, uh, I seem to remember from years ago on the planning board, we always had an eye at least for when we were provoke, likely provoking uh, um, the, 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 the litigious responses. Mm -hmm. We we didn't want to provoke a litigious response without realizing that we were likely doing so. That was something that we certainly didn't want to do, and we needed to know enough to know that. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, I think it's kind of about striking that balance. Um, and also, I think you were talking last time, too, about... Um, keeping the door open for some modern interpretations and modern design as well. Um, that, that, that is yes, compatible. That's true. And, and we don't know what compatible is, but it just means basically in my view, compatible means thoughtful, intelligent, uh, conscientious, uh, progressive, um, contemporary or more design. I mean, you know, it's, it's, uh, something that's, going to be regarded highly in 50 years time mm -hmm. uh, very hard to imagine what that might be right now of course but our job i think is to try not to prevent uh, to, to to represent that the historic district is a is a frozen in time forward uh, uh thing and that there's no history from today onwards uh, that's, that's, that's as i keep saying that's not a not a not an intelligent or appropriate uh well appropriate is our word so that's not appropriate yeah okay um yeah thanks bruce we all i uh i'm also interested in um what shannon mentioned from last week just about getting the ball rolling on, on putting together some design guidelines. Um, I'm just, I just quickly Googled like Northampton has a set of design guidelines, uh, Gloucester, Harvard, Harwich, Wayland. There seems to be a number I could pull from. Yes. Um, so yeah, I think that that's a good idea to start looking at those. Um, okay. Well, you could put that up as a packet, you know, a week yeah. or two before the meeting, then we would have a chance to look at it in advance and, uh, Totally. Yeah. Yeah, that would be good. And then we can review it at the meeting, but having had a chance to look at it beforehand would be good too. Yeah. Definitely. Um, okay. And and then um I had on the agenda just anything, um, kind of other more administrative matters. Um are is anyone feeling like we need any more um changes to the bylaw um, exclusions or, you know, I think last year what we did with the mini splits was really effective. Um, and, but I haven't, so far this year, I haven't, or I guess since then, I don't think there's been too much more that's, you know, 
been you know too cumbersome for applicants um, I think uh, the only thing that's cropped up that causes this uh, perhaps uh, some thought uh, is uh, with windows and yeah. uh, uh, what is appropriate when it comes to windows which are now necessarily more energy efficient, um, particularly so far as Muntins are concerned. I, I think we, I, don't, I think we've, we've more or less figured out that. Well, I don't know what we figured out. I think we 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 figured out that simulated divided lights are fine. I think we figured out that uh, with people putting in grills and so forth on one side or other of the glass seemed like it would be fine. But of course, uh, there was virtually nothing to stop them from pulling them out a week later or someone pulling them because they're so easy to just to with, withdraw. Right. So my sense is that we, we, should, um, we should as a committee realize, I mean, be institutionally realize that anything other than either simulated divided lights that means to say divisions between the glass the double panes of glass or fully restored original windows uh, with um, what they call energy panels which is extra layers of glazing on either the inside or the outside outside is storm windows and the inside are uh, uh, so those are the only two ways where we could uh, can be sure that the the Munton uh, arrangement of of windows in historic houses will remain um, vi uh, visually consistent with the uh, with with the with the with the historic uh, creation product, and that grills. Snapping grills are really uh, nothing, not something that we can rely on. So, if we think it's important that a particular project retain the look of these mountains, I think we have to recognize that we are committing the uh, the client, the the applicant, to considerable some mm -hmm. some considerable yeah. additional expense. So, I think that it would help for us to have an established realization and recognition of this as a as a as a body which means we should constant we should have a policy written on this because we, our, our numbers change so maybe we should put some um, maybe i could do this maybe i should just write down what i just said and um, and and uh, submit it as a uh, i don't know whether it would lodge in our <laughs> uh, but but it it does seem to be important that we don't kid ourselves mm. about uh, uh, divided lights in uh, in windows. And we could just say to ourselves, under the circumstances, we are comfortable with windows that match the proportion and a few other things, but that we really don't care about whether the windows are, are divided or appear to be divided or not. Maybe I should just ask the four, the, the three of you, uh, not including Ben necessarily, ask the, the three of you, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about the idea that the muntins, that's what these little grills are called, the, we'll call them divided lights, I guess. How do you feel about the idea that we should be uncommitted uh, to preserving that look in windows in the historic district. Rita? I, I, feel, I have mixed feelings because I think those windows are so beautiful. When I'm looking at the House Amherst College just bought on Sunset, I love yep. those windows, but I also agree that maybe it's not our job. Maybe it's asking people too much because they're so expensive. And with the new letting unleaded rules for children, maybe it is too much, but maybe we could word it in such a way to say, it's wonderful if you can preserve the old windows, but, but we're not gonna demand it. Maybe I should find out what the premium is at the moment 
uh, to get simulated divided lights over um, just grills. Also, just over, over, you know, and, and just over, you know, like um, no, you know, no muttons, just a plain, just a plain window. Yes, that's but what it, I mean. What the premium for simulated divided lights uh, is versus just one big. Uh, Double or triple pane sheet of glass. Right. Know, no, but you, I thought you said snap. I thought you said snap-ins. I think yeah, the snap-ins are are virtually. Um, I mean, they they have almost they have almost no cost. But well, they're not very attractive. But no. Um, but the other thing I think too is is if we're going to do that, we need to compare. You know, the windows without the muttons at that as a good quality window. Um, cause a lot of times people will say, all right, it's, it's a replacement window. You know, it's not as good as, you know, a wood, you know. Yes. Yeah, so there were replacement window is replacing typically the sashes and keeps the frame. So there is a, there's a nobility if you like in that, because it's preserving the, uh, which is, I think what the, uh, the Amherst college president's house were intending to do, wasn't it? They were, no, they were keeping the, uh, they were that's right. They were keeping the they were keeping the frames because they wanted to keep the the stucco the the stucco, right? But I, no, but anyway, I'm just saying it's just so I don't like the premium. Sometimes seems like it's more than it actually more than it actually is. I, my feeling is just I don't feel that it's always necessary. Um, I mean, some of the houses in like the Lincoln Sunset District don't have them now. Um, yes. But, you know, I, I think if that's what's there and what's historically appropriate to the house, it, it should be encouraged. But, um, you know, we're not what I mean, we don't have any rights of enforcement, really. So I think it's probably always better to try to work with the homeowner for a solution. Well, we, we, we have rights of enforcement, to, to use your phrase, uh, Judy, insofar as we're deciding whether something's appropriate or not. But after the fact, we do, like, I'm just saying, I'm thinking of the, the thing that came up at the last meeting where, Karen, I think you said Jennifer had brought to your attention a project that we had approved on, McCle was it on McClellan Street? Yes. That the windows were going in and they weren't the windows that we had approved. That was, was her thought. Um, and that's what I'm talking. I mean, that's what that's, I mean. After the fact, if we approve well, that's, it, no, that's different because uh, I'm talking about when someone comes to us and wants to do certain things, and we are asked to decide whether we think it's appropriate or not. Oh no, no, I understand that. I understand yeah. that. No, no, I was talking more about this because then it's. I mean, I kind of feel like that's a real conundrum because what do you do? Well, if somebody. Uh, it gets a certificate of appropriateness from us having presented based, you know, because we always vote the certificate, vote the approval of the certificate of appropriateness based on plans, uh, dated, you know, dated plans or dated documents that are submitted with them. And if the, if the applicant deviates from those dated documents, then we, then they, then they, notionally, they have to pull it out and put it in, or they have to get us to say we're, we're okay with the, the non-de minimis change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, technically, but, the bylaw does give the building commissioner power to enforce the bylaw. I think there, there's fine. There can be fines associated with um, breaking the bylaw, um, and yeah, I mean, certainly you can't. You can't get a building permit without going to us first. Yeah. So there are there are mechanisms. I also, I mean, I, in that house, I talked to the woman that lives there with a newborn baby now, and she said they just made a decision to buy everything secondhand. So their kitchen is secondhand and the windows are secondhand. And in some ways, I commend her because it makes the house more affordable for a young family. So I have kind of mixed feelings, but anyway. I, I do no, I, I get that, but I looked up the building permit and it's that was that was that was a huge project. So that is true. You know, I really I think arguing that the cost of putting the right windows in was prohibitive is that's probably I think you're probably right too. Is a little yeah. inappropriate, is inappropriate, I would say. You know, it's yeah. 
and and after the fact i mean i i'm yeah. in terms of uh, uh, authorities power to enforce the uh, the execution of uh, what the applicant has applied for i think of the uh, houses uh, built 30 or 40 years ago i guess illegally on uh, maple street north maple street just opposite what is now the umass horse farm but there were five houses on the uh, west side of uh, North Maple Street from Warner Road North in the 1980s that were built by a developer who hadn't bothered to get all the necessary approvals. I won't go into the details except to say that um, four or five years later, they were pulled down and they were they were, wow. they were completed new houses on North Maple Street. Wow. And they are no, that now you drive past and it's a farm field. Um, it had the details is what the, what the, what the developer violated are, 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 are interesting and probably not worth going into right now. But the point is that uh, that, that is the, uh, the gold standard for somebody who was disrespectful of a regulatory authority in our local area. So compared to that, everything I think of when I'm thinking about whether somebody in Rob Morris' position should or could or might uh, do what we're talking about, I think, well, it's a whole lot less uh, draconian than, uh, mm -hmm. than bulldozing five houses. Yeah, and, right. and it, it, it is. Well, it is. Oh, go ahead. I was I was gonna say, say, and it's right. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> in San Francisco, there was a historic house that passed everything. A new builder came in and they tore it down and built a new house. And the historical commission made them tear the new house down and rebuild the old house exactly. Oh my God. Wow. So that's, that's even more extraordinary. <laughs> but it was a historical house. It was a beautiful house they tore down yeah. and made it like a monster house there. But they had to tear it down and build, rebuild. So that's, that's what uh, that's what can happen. No, I was going to say I. I mean, I I went by the house, and frankly, it looks like an old farmhouse. And I don't think the fact that it has all these windows is terrible anyway. I personally, I don't think it's, it aesthetically <laughs> would make the house look more historical because of that type of house it is. Yeah. But it's just kind of the point of we have an applicant that we approved for something and then they just kind of decide to do something different. I think, I, I, I guess the term is disrespectful, you yes. know, to just kind of go ahead and do this and not at least say to the town, you know, we're doing this. And especially after the applicant was a little bit pushy about their, you know. Yes, I, I, uh, I don't, didn't quite know what we should do about that because I gathered that we weren't going to push them to because I know you all have not all of you but you some of you have walked past and we haven't heard that it's uh, so egregious that we should do something and no Virginia, I absolutely take your point that we don't want to encourage people to get the idea that that we we spend our time doing what we do and we don't really care about whatever happens afterwards so, right and that's I mean because really if, if that's because it makes me think, why am I here, you know? So, but on the other hand, we don't want to be petty either. So, so this is, this is difficult, so isn't enough. it, Ben? Do you have a sense of what, uh, what a bureaucratic, what a reasonable bureaucratic action would be under the circumstances that Judy describes? Um, so I guess... Because we've also said, it, if we don't do anything, we've actually set a precedent. Yes, the future, which is not a good thing. So I agree. Yeah, I mean, there's been instances where um, commission members have brought to my attention that someone in the neighborhood was like making changes without a building permit or without coming to the commission. I've I've sent letters before, you know, letting someone know, like just so you know you are in the local historic district like not not calling out in particular what they did or, or just saying um you should come to the you should you need to file for a building permit and have this project reviewed by the commission 
and then sent them like our pamphlet that uh, that outlines like why why we have a district and why um and so I mean that that's a different instance because that's someone who maybe was unaware of that they were in a local oh, yes. historic district. Yes. This and, this is this is very different and, from that. Yeah, um, but in this case, I think um, because it sounds like no one. I think if it was if it was an egregious uh, change to like you know adding an you know, a, a whole new, you know, addition that they didn't talk about or, or a different uh, configuration of, of doors or, you know, the deck was like much bigger than they said it was. I think there would be grounds for like a more, uh, uh, like an actual enforcement order. Um, in this case, because it was just slightly different windows than they said they were going to install. Um, yeah, I think we could write them a letter and just say, you know, let them know in the future. Um, you know, you need you need to make sure that the designs you present to the LHD match what you actually follow through with. You should have more uh, complete drawings when you come to the commission. Um, I mean, I think we tried to make that clear during and after the fact. Um, but I don't feel a need to issue any sort of enforcement or order or fine or, and I'm personally, I'm not worried about this precedent setting. I know I don't, I don't think um, I'm not, I guess I'm just not that worried about that. Um, yeah. But When I talked to the woman whose name I can't remember, she, she was, Kind of happy, she said. Well, we found some secondhand windows that fit the that fit what we fit the drawings or fit. I mean, she was. I thought she, in her mind, they were the same. And so I could. I I I agree with you that I wouldn't want to do anything. I think their hearts are in the right place, and they, in their own sense, felt that they were coming pretty close to what they had told yeah. us. Yeah. Right, like it doesn't seem like they were trying to, you know. No, they were just pull like, a fast and they found a whole or, kitchen too. At some some company that takes kitchens out of houses. I mean, they, yeah, they really should have. They really should have gotten in touch with us when they found. I, I agree, and maybe we, yeah. that sounds like a good halfway. Well, point. I I think Judy and I feel. Uh, I'll speak for myself. I won't speak for both of us, but but the, the but it was certainly true uh, that when they came to us, they came with very insubstantial drawings, very confusing drawings that they hadn't bothered to spend money doing. They, they were sloppy and, uh, and, and uh, perfunctory in their approach to us in the first instance. So it, it didn't create a good taste in my mouth anyway. But um, uh, Greta, I'll, I'll take your point because just, you've, you've like spoken to them and uh, the community and, and, brunch yesterday and they seemed like they were do-it-yourselfers. So that's what the woman was saying. Oh, we're so excited. We found these secondhand windows that seemed they're going to, anyway, that was just my take is that, I don't know. Okay. Well, I'll go back to my 25 year old self when I would have uh, done exactly <laughs> that. Yes, Karen. Um, you know, the, their whole profession is sustainability, environmental engineering. Uh, the Emily, the woman is a professor. Emily. Yeah, of environmental engineering. So I think their, their whole emphasis on it was living in town, putting in geothermal, reusing things and uh, doing it in a way that they can afford. And then they had this baby coming. So their mind was on things that we we think are good and want to encourage. Um, I agree; it would be nice in in some ways to just mention, you know, our we're we're proud of you for for doing what you're doing, but this whole thing is to kind of preserve uh, the aesthetic feeling, which I'm sure they agree with. Just mention that it would be nice if they had worked with us. Um, well, yeah, and I totally agree. And I, that, that's fabulous. I mean, that's one of the reasons I live near town too, you know, right. but right. 
but that, that they should have just, I mean, I would have been happy if they presented that. Should have. And I, I'm not sure why they, they didn't, but I have a feeling it had to do with the fact that too much was happening. The new baby was being born. Yeah. They had to get into the house. You know, there was just too many things happening at once. Well, I also from a, well, as you know, from a design standpoint, I think part of it too was that, you know, I didn't realize how big of a project that was until I looked it up. I'm surprised they weren't required, to, you know, that they did not have um, an architect, mm -hmm. you know, and or an engineer. Yeah, it was interesting too. They, uh, that was one that. of the people, um, the building inspectors here were commenting that it's, he, he was acting as a general contractor too, which is yep. um, pretty rare for a project that size that the homeowner is the general contractor. Um, so it was a lot to... Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think if there had been more professionals involved, it wouldn't. Yeah, it wouldn't have come to this. So it kind of begs the question, you know, he's taking all this work on for himself, but as taking on for his work for himself, he's creating more work for the town in certain yeah. ways. Yeah, which may or may not be appropriate, you know. Um, so yeah, I guess that's true. But if if, if he's an isolated instance, and I guess he is, yeah. it's probably topic we can I mean I don't you know I don't think I don't think we need to like call anybody you know it's not it's not that big of a deal like we've talked about but um it's just nice if people present what they're actually going to do and exactly follow yeah. through and if they're not going to do it then just yeah. say so or something yeah I will say too just in terms of like the impact of the this commission um a lot of projects before they even get to being reviewed, the I'll have a conversation with the architect, with the property owner, and let them know like this is what the local historic district, you know, will comment on. This is what they're going to review. And so before there's ever even a public hearing, um, they're they're aware that they're kind of going to step up their design game and bring bring in a, uh, you know, just make sure that the work is compatible with the district and. And that it's historically appropriate. So I think there's, there's just the very existence of the local historic district. Even if sometimes you guys feel like you're just kind of, um, oh, this looks good, sure, like <laughs> why not? Um, like it, it before it gets to that point, the, the the design is already that advanced and that you know appropriate, if you will, because the district exists and because the commission will be reviewing those projects. So. Um, I guess I guess I just wanted to mention that as well. Yeah, that happened with the uh, with the big condo, the condo or the apartment condos, whatever they're going to be on uh, uh, the Sunset Fearing project, where um, like two months before the first public hearing, they were, you know, already thinking, taking pictures of houses in the district and making sure the design was appropriate with the incompatible with surrounding houses. So. That is, that's nice yeah. to hear. Yeah, yeah. But, um, well, uh, are we done at this point? I could, I've got another Zoom meeting shortly, so I could uh, have a shower since I'm pretty grubby. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you couldn't tell. <laughs> Judy, Judy, do you yep. want, uh, are we just going to let this go or should somebody draft a little letter saying, you know, we congratulate you on using your system a very bit, but it would have been nice for you to come back because you didn't do what you said. And or, or are we going to just let it go? Um, I guess I would say I'm open to your thoughts. My feeling is let it go. I don't. I don't really see what we would get. And yeah, I I kind of agree. And also, you know, and if, if like, if this guy comes back in the future, then we kind of have the leverage to say, look, you. Yeah. Um, did, yes. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah. No, I don't, I wouldn't, well, I don't want to make a big, I don't want to make a huge case about it. It's just more of a, you know, I guess a frustration that, um, no, and, it, and, and as you say, it's some, it's, it's, it, it doesn't rise to the level of egregiousness as other things, but mm -hmm. it's still something that shouldn't have happened. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, does anyone else have any thoughts about that? I just, I, I was just going to change the topic slightly. Yeah. Does anybody else want to write? Does anybody think we should say something or? 
Oh, okay, good. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, that sounds good. I was just gonna say before everyone goes, I just wanna um, pick our next meeting date um, just so we have something on the calendar. I know August can sometimes be a busy time for people. Um, and I'm actually taking two weeks off kind of towards the end of August. So I was gonna maybe propose August 8th is a Monday um, um, for our next meeting. Sure. I, I think I don't uh, come back from Germany till August 8th. It would be nice if we did it on maybe the 9th. Could we do a Tuesday exception? Um, yeah, really anytime that week uh, works for me. Same with me. Same with me, yeah. Yeah, I'm okay. Okay, Peggy, are you still with us? She's, I don't know. Yeah, no, I've been, I've been listening to the whole. Okay. Yeah, that and works, works for me. That anytime that week. Okay. And the later that week doesn't work for me, but. Um, so August, work. August ninth is that where we're thinking? Does that work for everybody? Yep, for me. Okay. Eight o'clock. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yep. My apologies for being late. Just uh, lost track of time. <laughs> Summertime. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Karen, are, what, are you going to Germany tomorrow? No, on the 17th. Oh, okay. Yeah. Safe travels. Enjoy. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Are we all set? I think so. So. We need to close the meeting. Okay, uh, move to adjourn. Second. Vote was by clicking the red button. Okay, everyone in favor. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, we'll talk to everyone in a month. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.